Hey gang, bad player 03 here. Sorry to have to do this, but this debate has been frustrating me and eating away at me for so long that I just feel the need to, to come on and, and state my piece. And this is only for the Canadian people, really, so I mean, if uh, you're in an American audience, you might not really find this interesting. The extent that I hope the Canadian people will, but <clears throat> there's been this uh, debate about whether the government should be allowed to keep these loopholes that they've created to allow uh, foreign cell phone companies to come into Canada and do business basically using the cell network that's already in place which has been paid, main, created, paid for and maintained by Canadian companies free of charge uh, to do business uh, to create, just to create competition. Of course their the government's excuse is that it's not going to be better rates, more competition, better rates, that sort of thing. And the only the reason I keep seeing coming up again and again from Canadians defending the government and to justify it is that they keep saying that these big three, uh, Bell, TELUS, and Rogers, are ripping the Canadian people off with unfair cellular rates. And I just I just couldn't accept this at face value. I couldn't uh, just say, okay, well, they're unfair rates because I had to see it for myself. So I went on to the Verizon website, did some shopping on the Verizon website, and I can, which is the leading in, leading cell phone company in the states, and they're the, the most interested company in coming to Canada and doing business. The ones that are most excited and ready to jump at this opportunity that the Canadian government is going to be giving these uh, foreign companies. And I compared it to Bell because Bell is the leading industry in Canada. They are, they've been growing while uh, Rogers and Telus have been declining. And so they're comparing the two biggest players in the industry with pricing and using comparable devices. Now, obviously, the uh, you can't you can't compare apples to oranges. You can't look at the smallest, cheapest little cell phone, flip phone on on some cheap little network, and compare that to you know the high end, powerful phones that consumers are asking for, like the Galaxy S4 and the iPhone 5, etc. You have to compare like terms. And so let's look at I'm looking at the highest end of the scale because that really is the the benefit of what the big three has brought to Canada is a network capable of supporting great phones like the Galaxy S4 and the, the iPhone 5. Phones that otherwise would, li would likely not even exist in Canada if the network wasn't there to support them. And this network has grown tremendously over the past five years through through the money that the consumers have been paying for their cell networks. And of course some consumers keep saying, well, they've been ripping us off all these years. The network should be should be ours already. We, we've been paying all these ridiculous rates all these years and they've been ripping us off. And and so yeah, they, they bought this network off our own blood, essentially. And so I wanted to really look at this whole thing and compare them. So I'm going to use the Galaxy S4 especially. And I'm also going to, I also did a little bit of a look at the, the iPhone 5 because it's a very comparable phone to the S4 in the market right now. And using, because the U.S. is so big and there's so many states and markets, I use three different cities. Um, and I compared that to Alberta, which is a pretty good indicator, pretty good comparison to, because uh, not the not Ontario and it's not Saskatchewan or the Maritimes. It's a pretty average to large size province in Canada, which will be comparable to, say, the average state in the U.S. And so that was my comparison. I did as I did some shopping in the in the states. I used uh, Billings, Montana, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. You know, a couple of smaller northern states would think they would have a higher rate because they're more spread out. There's a lot less people there per capita than in the east. But I also used New York, New York, New York City, where I my hypothesis would be they should have the absolute best rates in the entire U.S. because so many people concentrated in such a little area. Of course they should have the most amazing rates. There's there's mil how many millions of people in that little area to be served by the, by the network. So they should have the best rates of all, shouldn't they, compared to Alberta and that sort of thing on, on Bell. And so I did some shopping. So we're using the S4. In Billings, Montana, The uh, they're giving they sell the S4 on the Verizon website. You can check for yourself. I encourage you to check for yourself if you don't believe the numbers I'm going to give you. They're charging $200 for the iPhone 5 on a two-year term. They're the, the cheapest plan I found that was worth comparing is an $80 level. It's for uh, limited talk and text all over the U.S., uh, voicemail call display, and 500 gigabytes of data. Now, obviously, 500 is a bit low. So you add $10, making it $90 for, for gigabyte of data, and just you know, another $10 gets you 2 gigabytes of data, etc. So basically, 90 bucks a month for on a two-year term, plus two hundred dollars for an iPhone five to enjoy service over a two-year period. That's what Americans in Billings, Montana, are paying. Now, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, when I looked at the S four, I was kind of excited. They're still charging the one ninety-nine on the two-year term. However, 
when I went to look, it said $50 per month for a gigabyte of data. I thought that sounds pretty good. So I selected it, went through the process. I didn't take any insurance. I didn't add any accessories, just $50 per month, one phone, one S4 on, their, on a two-year term. And all of a sudden, I see this $40 thing called the smartphone line access fee. And they're saying that's a monthly fee, meaning my monthly rate is now 90 bucks a month. So much for this little 50 I saw originally. So essentially, on uh, uh, the Galaxy S4, $200 on a two-year term, 90 bucks a month, unlimited US calling and texting, voicemail call display, and a gigabyte of data. Sounds kind of familiar. Basically the same thing being offered in Billings, Montana. So that, you know, that's the small states. You know, we, we could use many, many different states to look at that. But just to give a contrast, let's go to New York, New York. The biggest, perhaps the biggest state in the entire U.S. I'm, I'm not the, the biggest geography or, or any of that stuff. I'm just going on my knowledge that you, New York, New York is a major, huge, concentrated U.S. city. So I went in there and I looked at the Galaxy S4. And I saw $200 for the S4 on a two-year term. And the rate plan, 50 bucks a month, et cetera, et cetera. $40 a month, smartphone line access fee. Expected monthly rate, $90 a month for limited US calling, voicemail call display, or in texting, voicemail call display, and gigabyte of data. Doesn't that sound awfully familiar all of a sudden? It's almost, almost like I'm repeating myself here. So people in New York are paying exactly the same rate for the exact same devices in Billings, Montana, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. So think, okay, so that's this great U.S. rate that Canadians are expecting to get if Verizon comes into Canada. So let's go on to Canada and look at Bell. Now, this is right off the Bell website. So I look at the Galaxy S4 for Alberta. One thing I said I was going to use that as a comparable average province. So they're asking 180 for the S4 on a two-year term. Not 200, but 180 Canadian. Canadian dollars, maybe there's a, you know, a difference in the rate of the, of the dollar too, of course. On a two-year term, same two-year term as in the States, $85 a month. For unlimited Canadian calling and texting, voicemail call display, and a gigabyte of data. Not quite deja vu, is it? $85 a month. Why not 90? It's 90 all places in the States, I checked. So you're telling me that we're getting ripped off in Canada, yet we're paying even slightly cheaper rate for the phone and the plan for the exact same terms. It doesn't seem like they like, uh, Bell uh, and these media three are ripping us off so much now, does it? And that Verizon has these amazing rates. Um, and just to contrast, the iPhone 5 is pretty much $200 on a two-year term everywhere with the same rate plans available as for the S4. So it doesn't matter if you go iPhone 5 or Galaxy S4, you're paying about the same price. The only way you get a cheaper rate is if you go with, the, um, with either the S4 in Canada, in Alberta, or if, and of course you also get a better rate on the plan either way, whether you go iPhone 5 or S4. So... And they said, this is right off the websites. You can shop for yourself, people. If you don't believe me when I say these are the exact rates they're advertising on their websites for these places. So, I mean, are they really, is, is Canada being really ripped off, consumers, by these big three? Or is it just somebody trying to convince you that they were being ripped off? Is it the government trying to convince you that this is a good thing for some reason that is not as up and up as it seems? If Verizon comes into Canada... That's an awful lot of tax dollars that the, the Canadian government tends to get or, or stands to gain from that. And if consumers aren't going to benefit by better rates, because obviously Verizon is not charging any less than, than, than Dell is charging for the same equal, identical service and terms, who's going to benefit from this? Not going to be Canadians. It's going to be the government. They're going to make extra tax dollars on, on, on basically the backs of Canadian companies. And what, what's more, Verizon wouldn't even be coming into Canada if it wasn't for some deal being given by the government. They could have come in at any time. The only reason they're licking their chops is because the government is talking about giving them free access to an already established coast-to-coast -coast powerful LTE network that they didn't pay a penny for. Like, how dare the government do this? And the CRTC is, is at the heart of this. But really, the government, if they really wanted these companies to come into Canada, why don't they just offer them ridiculously low tax breaks? Why don't they? Because they want the tax dollars. They're not stupid. If they, if they entice these companies into Canada at a reduced tax rate, they're not getting what they're actually after, which is the tax dollars. So they use the CRTC as a disguise to rip off the Canadian companies to give Verizon a free ride or any other companies a free ride without having to pay a penny out of their own pocket. They're, they're lying to you. They're tricking you into believing that this is a good deal for Canadians when the only one really benefiting is the Canadian government. Harper is almost looking like a crook. People, you need to wake up and realize 
the CRTC deal is not good for Canada. Verizon is not this amazing company that's giving better rates. I mean, the other argument has been their customer service. Yeah, they're the number one rated customer service in Canada, and Bell isn't. But haven't you ever heard the old story of the sports team that's, that totally dominates an entire sports season? But look at their competition. Is it because they're so amazing? Or is it because their competition is so bad? <laughs> There's teams that basically coast to, to a championship because their competition is useless. What is maybe maybe the fact that Verizon is getting super high ridiculous rates is because T-Mobile and all these other companies are not just not that good. <laughs> Whereas in Canada we have Bell, Rogers, and Telus all heavily competing neck and neck for your dollar, and they're all fighting back and forth and and leveraging each other. So basically, they each got a third of the of the popularity in terms of customer service. Nobody can dominate customer service because all three companies are offering similar rates and similar rides. You can't use customer service uh, reputation as, a, as an excuse for this either. And you got to understand Verizon is a company with 10 times the assets of any Canadian cellular company. If, they come in, if they're charging the same rates in the U.S. on their own people, if they come into Canada, they're going to just rip us off as much as anybody else. And what's worse, they're probably going to push one of the three Canadian companies off the market. So it's basically only two Canadian companies versus one American company with identical rates, except that now a third of your money is going to go south of the border and not be used to develop a better network for Canadians and better technology and better services so we can get phones like the next generation after the S4 and, and after the iPhone 5, a network that will support them, which is first class in the entire world. This is not a good move for you people to accept this. We have to tell the government we're not going to accept their lies anymore. The rates, even the rates in on their Verizon's own website speak for itself. If if they if you believe Bell, Telus, and Rogers are ripping off the Canadian people, then you've got to understand Verizon is equally ripping off the American people. And if they come into Canada, they're going to do exactly the same thing to you. It's all lies. It's all propaganda. It's all people trying to convince you that Canadian companies are so very bad and that the American companies are so very good, whereas the numbers just don't speak for themselves. Their own advertisements are equal, or actually a little bit worse. It's only the Canadian government that's perpetuating this whole illusion so that they can convince you they're doing this for you, not for their own tax dollar rates. It's a bad move for the Canadian economy all around, and once we allow this to happen, there's no turning back. And when it turns out the grass isn't any greener, and everything we believed is going to be better doesn't happen, we're stuck. We're stuck with this other company in our, in our country which can do whatever we want, push, use their, their 10 times volume of, of assets to push away the Canadian companies, and they're going to be charging the exact same rates because that's what they do. They're doing it to their own people to this very day. And they're, even, they're so bold as to put it right on their website trying to sell it to their own people. <laughs> well, Canadians are saying that we're paying the same rate and we're getting ripped off. <laughs> It just doesn't make sense why you people keep spouting these the same propaganda, but we're getting ripped off as Canadians. We're not. We're getting the same rate as Verizon is giving to their people in, in the United States. We're just being told that it's not the case. We're being told there's five lights when there's only four. Don't believe the government. They're liars. They're crooks. I'm looking forward to voting for the first time in years to get rid of Harper because I am so sick to death of this crap he's trying to pull on, can on the Canadian company and trying to pull the wool over their eyes and trying to use the CRTC like they're some kind of heroes when in actual fact they're just out there to serve the government and not you. Please, people, wise up. Do the, do the research. Do the shopping. Look at the facts and make the decision for yourself. Don't believe the crap coming out of the media because the media is, is going to keep telling you what they think you want to hear, that you're being ripped off. That's what they're there for. They want to sell papers. They want to sell your, your media attention. They don't want to tell you the truth. They want to tell you what they think you want to hear. If you want to know the truth, you got to look for it for yourself. And that is the reason why people like Canadians keep continuing to believe that we're getting so badly ripped off by the big three. We're not. We're getting fair rates for a fair product. The technology in Canada has risen tenfold in the past five years. We've got a massive network that we didn't have five years ago, and that's, to put it simply, that's because of the, because of TELUS and Bell deciding to play fair with each other and, and amalgamate the resources to create a good network, because neither one of them had quite the resources to do it on their own. And then SASTEL joins in, and they make this great network all across Canada that um, is better than anyone else's because they start working together. With, there's, and yet they still compete against one another. There's, their rates still go up and down with each other, and usually down. For the most part, I mean, two years ago, we didn't have an indicating calling. A year ago, we didn't have an indicating calling on every plan. Now they're all an indicating calling. 
things are, are getting better constantly, naturally the way they are. We don't need to give American companies unfair advantages to get better rates. We just need to simply let time play its course. The LTE network's only been around for a year. Every year that network is going to be less maintenance and less cost than it cost the companies in the last year to build, or the last couple of years to build. The rates are just going to get better. But if you allow more you allow unfair competition, you're not going to get better rates. You're going to get an American company dominating the world and basically pushing us in the direction of being another state because the Canadian economy is going to fall to crap if the government's allowed to rip off its own companies at the expense of foreign companies. Bell, Rogers, and Telus are acting in Canadian's best interest. They're putting the money that you spend back into Canada. They're investing in Canadian assets. They're hiring and employing many Canadian people to help the Canadian economy be what it is today. They are good players. They're doing what's right for Canada for the most part. And the rates are no more than in the U.S. They're maybe even a little cheaper. They're cheaper. And we, we don't even appreciate what we have as Canadians. Like, is that what kind of attitude is it? We believe we're so good. And we don't even appreciate the world we have that's right in front of our eyes because people keep telling us otherwise. And we're, we're not wise enough to look for ourselves. Do the math. Do the shopping, people. Find out for yourself and see through the lies the government's trying to push you on you. And let's get rid of this Harper character and find someone who's going to actually look after our best interests instead of trying to line their own pockets. And that's all i got to say on this. But I really hope you guys will take what I say to heart because when, if we allow this to happen, there is no turning back. We will never be able to undo what we've done. And when we realize how much we had and how much we're losing, there's no way we're ever going to be able to get back again. The one move you can't afford to make is to be too quick and rash on this, this, on this issue. People will keep telling you that Bell, Tellus, and, and Rogers are afraid of competition. They're not. George Cope of Bell himself, I heard it from his mouth, that they welcome Verizon to compete, providing it's on a fair foothold. If you want to do business, you've got to build your own network. You have to pay to, to build it and to maintain it. And that is the only reason Verizon isn't in Canada today because they're too cheap to do that. They recognize that it takes years and years to make the money back from building a multi-million dollar network. Bell and Telus have did that in the past five years. And, 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 and believe me, they put a lot of those assets into that. And they're going to continue to serve us going forward. Verizon's not dumb. If they had to do that, they'd never be able to, to come to Canada and, and make in, any kind of money in any reasonable time frame. It's only these handouts that are going to make Verizon do business. And why would Bell, Telus, and Rogers be afraid of competition when the rates are exactly the same? They're not afraid of competition. That's all lies. They're afraid of unfair competition, having their hands tied behind their back while American companies are given unfair opportunity that Canadian companies don't, all, don't have. The government is basically selling us out to, to, raise, to, to bring American companies for their own tax benefits and not to benefit Canadians. Please wise up, people. If I can give you my heartfelt feeling in this, please wise up and look at what, what's out there and, and learn to appreciate what we actually have as Canadians by exporting Canadian companies who put money back into the Canadian economy left, right, and center. This whole network of LTE we have today, <clears throat> the power that we get out of the, the Galaxy S4 and the iPhone 5 and all those high-end phones that are coming out in the future that Bell, Telus, and Rogers are bringing to us, they're all products of money that, that was put back into this country to give us the standard of living we have today cellular-wise. That technology is not cheap. It's not free. It costs a lot of money, and somebody's got to put that money into it. And Verizon comes into Canada and gets to give that without any cost on their own part. That's not fair competition, and it's not going to be good for Canadians. And the rates speak for themselves. They're not any better. Verizon could be charging way cheaper in the States if they wanted to. They could be giving plans for $60 a month on a two-year term on an S4. They don't. Not to their own people. Why would they do that for us? It's all lies. It's all propaganda. It's all the government trying to trick you into helping them earn more tax dollars at the expense of what's right. And it's not right. It's unfair competition. It's unfair all around for the government to steal something that they did not put any money into, they don't pay any money to maintain, and hand it freely to foreign competition that uh, that couldn't afford to do business in Canada otherwise. It's just wrong, people. You've got to realize. You've got to wise up. Please say no. T e er, email. Send letters to the government. Tell them we're not going to stand for this. That we're not stupid. That as Canadians, we're smart and we know what's right and, and we know what's wrong. Please don't let this happen because once it does, it's, it's permanent. And the damage will be done forever and we'll never be able to get back what we have today, which is a darn good cellular network, some darn good amazing products on the market for a price that's competitive with everything in the U.S.
You can't get it back once you lose it. Protect what's ours. Protect Canada. This is a country we love. And if we become the, the 50 some odd state, I'd be really heartbroken. And if we start cheating Canadian companies to give benefits to, uh, to, the other, to other countries, the U.S. is going to win. And that's exactly what we're going to become. If you value yourself as Canadians and take pride in what we stand for and what we believe, get the facts, get the information, do your own research, do your own price comparisons if you need to. Don't let the government trick you, please. Harper is just one man. There could be many other people running this country right now who who, who be telling you different information. Don't just trust them blindly. Don't just trust the media that supports them blindly who tell and who, who make a living out of telling you what you want to hear. Find out the truth. Anyways, once again, my name is uh, Bad Player 3 uh, You can see me on this channel on many other things. I do a lot of stuff for World of Warcraft because I love the gaming industry and that sort of thing. But this is something really from my heart. And as a Canadian, as a person who loves Alberta and Saskatchewan and all our Canadian provinces, I urge you to take my words to heart because I'm not trying to sell you on anything. I'm trying to give you my true heartfelt feelings on this issue and it heart it breaks my heart to see what's happening around us and how the wool's being pulled up Canadians eyes without without anyone to protect them because Canadians already have this been sold on their idea that the big three cyber companies are are liars and cheaters and who will say anything to get their to get them to, to uh, just accept them blindly but the reality is it's the government that's lying and the facts speak for themselves the rates are exactly the same and they tell you otherwise who, Who's telling the truth? <laughs> so yeah, please. Once again, bad player 03. Yeah, I welcome uh, welcome comments. If you can find, oh, and of course, if you can find, prove me wrong. Find a better price on the S4 on a two-year term in the states. Show me what areas are cheaper because it sure isn't New York, New York. It sure isn't Billings, Montana, and sure ain't Minneapolis, Minnesota. Three pretty good, randomly chosen. Well, I, mean, I can't say randomly chosen, but pretty pretty good chosen states to look at a broad picture of what the US looks like and I couldn't see any any amazing prices there that, that we don't get as Canadians so please prove me wrong, find information, show me what I'm missing and, and don't use cheap cheap arse phones, don't use flip phones, don't use networks that only provide major couple major cities or, or major cities and nothing into smaller cities don't show me uh, networks that, don't, that can't do LTE because LTE is where it's at and that's the future and that's technology Canadians love and are not going to want to give up anytime soon. So you can't use networks that don't support LTE because it's pointless to look at their prices. Their, their overheads are much lower. To maintain a network of non-LTE is much cheaper than to maintain an LTE network. That's just the reality of it. So if you can show me an equal footing, someone who's giving a better price on an S4, all, like, not even, I mean, if there's even one state, that doesn't even necessarily prove the point of value. Widespread better price on a Galaxy S4 or an iPhone on a four on a two-year term with a much better rate plan, giving a gigabyte of data. I'd love to hear it and see where it is because I sure couldn't find it myself in my research. So yeah, I welcome feedback. I welcome being proven wrong, but I really hope that uh, you'll take what I say to heart and, and look at the facts for yourself because I think we're being tricked and we're being ripped off and and we're being confused by by a media and a government that would that are in it for themselves and not in it for your best interest. So once again, Bad Player 03 signing out. You guys have a good night.